everyone, welcome to New Tech. My name is Miles and it's wonderful to have you here. In today's video, we're going on an exciting journey in building my very own CNC, so let's go. For the past five years, I've been building various CNCs, starting from my very first one, which was the MP CNC, moving up to the Workbee CNC. I also built a rotary CNC, and then I also then built another MP CNC. But now it's time for me to do my very own CNC, one that is uh, gonna be a lot more rigid than the ones I've built in the past. So there's a couple of things I wanna add to my build, and a couple of things that's gonna make my build a lot more useful for me in my workspace. So the very first thing I wanna add to the build is it needs to be flat. So I want it to be doubling up as a work surface that I can use in the workshop, something that I can just push the x-axis off to one side and then I can use it for a multi-surface. So there can't be anything in the way for that table. The second thing that I wanted to be able to cut things that are a lot higher up. I noticed in my work CNC that I could only cut about 12 uh, centimeters or 120 mil off the surface. So it was lacking in height and flexibility over larger items. So I wanted to be able to cut much higher stock. So something maybe up to about 20 uh, centimeters or 200 mil. So that's the type of things I wanna be adding into this build. The very last thing that I want to add into this build is that I wanted to push my ability as a creator, something that was uh, aesthetically pleasing, something that was different and unique, something that would also include um, common materials that you'd be able to find in many different places to be able to build, just in case you guys might be interested in building something similar as well. So I also am gonna include a lot of different things in this build, so 3D printing, coding, LED strips, because that makes my machine much faster, as we all know, and a whole lot of other different manufacturing processes using my current Workbee CNC to create items for this brand new build. So let's jump into the first part of the build, starting with the table. So the initial table that I was considering when I first was designing the machine was just to go with the typical box table, just like it did for my previous machine. But after a little bit of thought, I thought, well, what the hell, if I'm gonna build a table from scratch, I may as well practice something more creative, you know, challenge the creative side of my brain. So that's what I ended up doing here and creating something that had a little bit more differences with the angles, but in hindsight, it was probably the most challenging part of this build because these angles are impossible to, to measure out. Um, and I think that in reflection to this, I would have uh, just created some brackets that would have connected these angles together instead of welding. So I've gone ahead and created these 3D printed little measuring jigs. Now these have the angles of which I need to cut them at. Um, and, uh, and I've done it this way just so that I can get um, precision with my angles instead of having to manually cut them out later on or uh, try and figure out the angle. So hopefully this is going to help me in the long term uh, trying to put these together. So as you can see these just slide over the bar and I can go ahead and just uh, trace these out to create my cut lines and then cut them out. I've also got the measurements on these and also the letter which they associate to with the plans. So if you guys are interested in doing the same thing hopefully this will help you out as well. So I've finished the square bar cutting and the grinding so these should be ready to go. I don't know how good or how um, perfect they're going to be but um, hopefully my my bad welding will help cover it all up anyway. So, um, so I've finished that and I've gone ahead and I've assembled the top of my bench. Now you can see here that I've used the C-beam. I had some spare C-beam left over. Um, this is just to help it keep um, plumb, make sure it's flat, make sure it fits uh, what is going to go on top of the table. So hopefully that this is um, going to be the easiest way. I thought that last time, but um, I hope this is going to make my process a lot easier putting it together. Um, and as you can see that I've already squared it up, mounted it ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and weld the three parts together and then also do the other center part as well. So here we go.
After cleaning up the welds and finishing the top and bottom panels, I realized that it was gonna be a really challenging project on how to fit the vertical legs onto the table just because they're on such strange angles. So I decided to use my Auto Laser 3 Master laser engraver to cut out these panels that I could use as a jig to position the legs on the right angle. And here you can see that they have been clamped to the legs, but unfortunately, just because the plywood was quite thin, it did bend and it didn't really hold the legs on the exact angle and it ended up being about 20 mil out of whack so I really wasn't happy with this jig for the legs however the idea was there and I think I learned a lot from that but next time I would create a much bigger jig for this project but I ended up just doing it by hand and it worked out anyway then I finished the welding and spray painted it black I finally finished the base and I'm really, really excited. This has taken me probably the best of about four days to create, weld together, to paint it, uh, but it has been extremely painful. It's not been my most loved process of building any machine is the welding. And it's something I need a lot more practice of, but it, it is holding really, really well. It's stable and, and I'm really loving it because there's a couple of things here which I really love about the design. The first thing is, is probably the weird shape. So on the side here, you can see that it kind of flares out. The best part about that is that just means that when I put the rails on either side, that the base will be sticking out just a little bit further further than the rails themselves. So if I did wheel something up against the machine, it's gonna be act as like a bit of a barrier to keep it out of the way of the machine and it'll clip the bottom of the machine before it clips the sides of the rails. Now, also at the front of the back of the machine, you'll see that the angles go the reverse direction they jump in. So the reason for this is that I can stand at the machine here, my feet will allow to be able to scoop underneath and there won't be anything kind of knocking on my knees or on my feet and uh, getting in the way of the movement. So I'm able to reach into the machine successfully without having to stand away and try and reach over. So I'm really happy about those design aspects of the machine that were incredibly fussy and really hard to weld together because they have these strange angles everywhere but I've done it and I'm really excited so there's a couple of other things here which I'm really excited about too is the rigidity of the actual table itself so as you can see here that it has a lot of angles on the corners so essentially this table would be able to stand up for itself and be able to hold itself even without the base plate on so because of those angles there that this makes this incredibly strong and rigid on the sides but with the base on, it's fantastic. And as you can see here, I've actually put wheels underneath this already. These are special little um, leveling caster wheels. You can just twist this little central part and a base will stick out and you can then level it up to where it needs to go. So there's a lot of really great features already. This is gonna make my build so much easier to make, but I'm really excited now in jumping on to the most exciting part is actually putting the CNC together. So let's get started. So I've got these aluminum C-beams. These are my 1500 uh, C-beams that are gonna go on either side of my machine. They're gonna create the base for my machine and they're gonna create like a box section each. On the top and bottom, I'm gonna have my linear rails. However, there, I need some way on how to keep them locked together. So I've come up with these aluminum brackets. These have been milled on my work BC and C. So I hope they're gonna work. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these together and see what happens. So stay tuned.
some time ago, I purchased a lot of these one meter C beams uh, on Marketplace, and uh, I got about nine or ten of these one meter C beams. So I thought this was a great project to use these C beams on, uh, and these are going to create my base for my CNC. So I have finished putting together the outside of the box outer rails of the C beam, the black ones. Um, however, the inside don't have any uh, supports or anything to keep it together. So that's where these will come into play. Uh, so there'll be about, I think, 10 of these all together. I'm still waiting for a couple in the mail, so I might miss the front and back ones because I've ordered them in black too, just so everything's uniformed. As you can see, this one here is the C-beam that goes on the middle. Um, and these are going to be laying down this way, so they're going to be flat. So the way I've designed it is that these two will be attached to the top uh, one of this so that would be attached to the top and then these ones here the two bottom ones will be attached to the bottom ones So this is going to clamp the inside of this square box uh, C-beam that I've got on the outside So there'll be support on the inside for both of the parts and I've got the outside covered as well So I'm gonna go ahead and put these into the center make them nice and even apart and uh, I'll see you shortly finished my base for my CNC so I've mounted the sides I've mounted the C-beam in the center I've also put down all the corner clamps as well and that has taken me a long time to do to make sure that everything is spaced out correctly and perpendicular so it's time to move now on to creating my spore board so the main idea with this table is that not only do I want to use it as a CNC but also a workplace that I can use um, where I can come and put things on top of it and be able to work like a normal table um, that means that I didn't want any Anything on the side to get in my way not like my work BC and see the sides are raised up so it's really important that I had like a table surface that I can um, work on and use be just because of the limited space in the garage so um, I have gone ahead and cut down my MDF already but if you look at the MDF it's actually composite panels you can see that I've used two different types of materials on the base I've used a 9 mil plywood and on the top I've used an 18 mil uh, MDF um, now, I made some mistakes when I first did my work BCNC quite some time ago. I put an MDF panel down, I surfaced it, it was looking really nice and really flat. And a couple of days later, because I live in a really humid place in Australia, that MDF panel just absorbed a lot of the moisture and then warped like over a couple of days. So it was really frustrating. I went to that effort to get it nice and flat and then I had a lot of issues. So this time around, I've decided to go with the MDF again. However, on the sides of these, I've just capped it off with a clear coat uh, and that's mainly just to choke the sides because I think it's the most vulnerable part of the MDF is the sides when you've cut it. Um, and I've also used my work BCNC to go ahead and cut these to shape as well. They've also put the mounting holes in them again. And that was a lot of fun because it was just literally, I cut one panel, take it straight off, put the next one on. And I just went through these panels really, really quickly. Now, um, the reason why I went back to MDF is uh, mainly just because it's really cheap material. I know that if I do accidentally plunge into it, it's not going to ruin any bits. It's just going to cut into it. So I'm not really worried. But the main thing is, is it's super cheap and I can replace these um, no problems. I did make a couple of extra panels that I can replace if I need to later on down the track. Um, but I've also created a slight gap on the sides of this. So you can see here that the plywood extrudes out a little bit and then it's cut off a bit shorter for the MDF part. Now the main reason for that is when I do mount it to this machine, because I do have the aluminium panels on the sides, I don't want to accidentally clip it when I go to do my flattening tool path is that I don't accidentally want to cut into my aluminium. So I have left a bit of a tolerance on the side that allows me to keep that apart. I'm gonna go ahead now and mount these MDF panels. So let's get to work. Yeah. 
I have finished the tabletop and I'm really, really excited and it's come together really, really nicely. So there's one thing that I still need to do is plug up these holes, which I'll probably just cut out um, little MDF plugs that I can insert into those holes. And then when I uh, surface the spoil board, they'll be knocked off and everything will flatten out. So the next process will be talking about the rails that I'll be using. So when I was first looking into CNC's that use linear rails, I noticed that some of the WorkBee CNC's, so that's my previous machine, some of the later versions of them that people had developed use these MGN15 linear rails. Now, these are decent, they're quite robust, um, but they are quite small for my needs. So when I was researching, I did purchase one of these, but I'll be using it for something else instead. So I've settled with the same linear rails that I did for my WorkBee CNC. Now these are HGR20 linear rails. They are absolute beasts. So they're five times stronger than these little fellas. And you should see the linear rail blocks. They are huge. So these are the linear rail blocks compared to these MGN15 blocks. Um, these are, I think the model number of these is HGH. Uh, 20 CA, so that means that the holes are in line with the linear blocks, not on the outside. Um, and these will be mounted two on each side. So I have four altogether for my Y axis and two on the X axis, and they can take up to a lot of weight and control with these ones here. So I'm really happy about my choice for those. Unfortunately, I have run out of my T-slot nuts, and so I'm waiting for them to arrive, hopefully in the next week or so. Um, and you can see here that I'm wearing gloves for these. So um, I noticed that when I installed it on my work bee, I used my bare hands. And unfortunately, because it is quite humid here and maybe a bit of sweat got uh, in contact with these rails, there was a little bit of rust um, on those rails that I still need to get rid of. So that's why I've still got my gloves on and I'm keeping these cases on these until I'm ready to install them. So I'm gonna install one of these just on either side at the top of the moment, just using the T-nuts that I do have left over. Um, and the reason for that is because I wanna start working on my X-rail. Now I need to know the exact width of my X-rail. So I need to know the furthest distance that these rails protrude on either side of the machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount one of these just on the tops and measure that out. Then I'm gonna get started on my X-axis whilst I wait for the additional T-nuts to arrive. For the X-beam design, I've decided to go for three different uh, C-beams for the X-beam design. Now, I have in the past seen some variations of assemblies on how the X-beam has been put together. I've seen ones like I've done for the side beams here where the two C-beams are together like a square. However, I wanted to make sure that I created an X-beam that would not have any issues down the track. So one of the issues about using aluminium and especially the C-beam is that there is some warp or some flex in that material. So I wanted to work really effectively on how I assembled my C-beam to get the best outcome. So I've gone ahead and purchased a couple of different C-beams. So I've purchased this extra thick C-beam and I purchased that in a 1500 mil and also two regular C-beams all in black. Um, and this is gonna span all the way across. So I had to wait till this stage anyway to assemble the X-beam. Um, because I needed to know the exact dimension from the outside of the linear rail blocks so I could figure out how wide my X-beam had to be because it had to be exactly the same size as those. So I've gone ahead and I've cut down my beams already. So these are the end bits that have just left over, but I want to explain what I'm going to be doing and how I'm going to be putting this together. So traditionally in any strong structural building, um, you'd often see a, a type of beam called an I-beam. Now, essentially that's what I want to try and replicate here is an I-beam. So what I'd be doing is starting with one beam that would be um, perpendicular and one on top, and that will create the two flat surfaces. And then the central one, which is my double uh, walled one, would go in between, and then that would be assembled just like that. Now, 
The reason why I've gone with this design is that um, often on my other machine, before I upgraded to the double walled one, is that there was some slight twist this way or that there was that slight bend. So I wanted to reduce that and try and eliminate it altogether. So when you add extra beams on a different plane, you will then get extra strength out of your beam. So I'm really excited to give this a go. And this is what I had prepared a little bit earlier. If I just put those aside. So this is my full X-beam put together already. It is really quite heavy. There is a lot of, uh, of aluminium here. However, it is beautiful. So I've put it together. I've used the L brackets to uh, assemble everything together. And this is really exciting because now I can move on to add the next parts onto the machine. But before I put this together, I want to explain the plates that I've had made for this machine. All right, so here I have a pretty solid piece of 6061 aluminium. You can see this is um, half inch, so this is 12.7 size. Um, this is what I was planning to make um, my plates out of for my CNC. This is strong, it's durable, it's something that is able to be machined. So I purchased it in mind of creating my plates with for my CNC and it was gonna be a perfect solution for this. Unfortunately, um, I did put this on my WorkBee CNC to try and start milling some and I had a lot of issues because my WorkBee at the time really wasn't up to the challenge of milling um, aluminium. And uh, what happened was that the axis was uh, vibrating and moving around and just making horrible cuts. So I ended up upgrading my WorkBee CNC to try and cut this stuff. But um, to be honest, I completely ran out of time to try and make my plates out of the aluminium. And this brings me to the sponsor of today's video, and that is PCB Way. So not only does PCB Way specialize in making PCBs and PCB prototyping, they also offer a lot of other services too. So that can range from injection molding to 3D printing to sheet metal fabrication. But in this case, they have absolutely saved me here. Um, I was really nervous about going ahead and cutting my own material, which was really expensive to buy and really expensive mistakes that I could have made. Um, however, that getting PCB way to um, help me with this CNC project has been my absolute savior for this. Um, and I have ordered through them this wonderful, this is 20 millimeters, uh, 6061 aluminum pieces. They have gone through and milled it to absolute perfection. They have put a beautiful chamfer on the side, but even better, they have been able to anodize this, package it, send it to me, and the only thing I had to do was design it and send it off to them. So for me, this was an absolute savior in this project and certainly worthwhile in getting PCB Way to help me out with this project because by far, I think that'll have been way too stressful for me to go ahead and do such large pieces on a machine that I really haven't milled much aluminum on before. So I'm going to start assembling this, putting this on my machine, and I'm really excited because this is when the project comes together and it starts looking like a CNC. So let's get to work.
So I finished up installing the end plates on the machine and they are looking fantastic. It does stop the X axis from accidentally falling off the end of the machine. So that's really helpful. Um, I still need to go ahead and mount the Z axis to the machine. However, I need to make a Z plate um, adapted to go over the linear bearings and then also attached to the back of the Z axis. However, I have run out of time to add it in this video and I'll be adding that into the next video. But I'll also be adding in the electronics into the next video too. So I'll be buttoning up all the electronics, getting this moving, um, and also doing some really cool things with uh, the electronics that I've never seen on a CNC before. So that's gonna be really exciting. Um, but I've also got a secret uh, addition that I'm gonna be adding to the back of the machine. Um, and I'm super hyped about that addition. So if you've liked the build so far and you wanna see more and see where this goes, please feel free to subscribe, like my video, and I'll see you next time.